The Irene Dunn, Brett McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in the gay new exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. The Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show, with Irene Dunn playing the role of Susan Armstrong and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, owner and star reporter, respectively, of the Hillsdale Morning Star. Well, events are beginning to happen, and as usual, they will have a definite effect on Susan and George. Flight 671, Independent Airlines, New York to Los Angeles, calling Hillsdale Airport, over... Tower, Hillsdale Airport, to flight 671. Go ahead, 671. Trouble with number four engine, Hillsdale. Can you clear me for an emergency landing? Give your position, 671. 25 miles northeast of your field. 8,000 feet, but I'm dropping down now. You're cleared for an emergency landing, 671. 10 mile an hour west wind. Come in on center runway. Over. <laughs> Still, it doesn't make any difference if we continue the series or let it drop. As far as I can see, Susan. Excuse me, George. Oh, sure. Hello? This is the tower at the airport. I've got some hot news. A transcontinental flight is setting down out here. Emergency. Oh, well, just a minute. Maybe you better take this. The airport thinks they have a scoop. No. Go ahead, airport. An independent airlines flight is setting down out here. Oh, any danger of a crash? No, just motor trouble. Oh. Thought you might be interested. No, no, I'm just glad I'm on the ground. You mean that ain't news for Hillsdale? Sorry. Miss America's on the plane. Thought you might get a story. Who did you say? Miss America. Oh, now you're talking, brother. That is news. I'll be right out. George, where are you going? The airport, Susan. Over. <laughs> Yes, I wanted to see you, Mr. Harvey. Well, that's what I like first thing in the morning. Bright, snappy dialogue. But why the Mr. Harvey? Is this a formal conference or something? Take a look at this, Mr. Harvey, and tell me what it is. Oh, well, that's easy. It's a bill for 25 bucks. From a nightclub. Well, prices are up all over. You know how it is. Your bill? Well, it was worth every penny. Had a grand time. <laughs> you should have been with us, Susan. I suppose Miss America enjoyed every minute of it. Ah, there's a great kid. Great kid. Celeste Kaczynski. Miss America. What hair? What eyes? What a... Dumb blonde. She's brunette. The Morning Star will not reimburse you for this bill. Oh, now, wait a minute, Susan. You can't do this to me. And why not? In the first place, my reporters have always paid their own entertainment bills, and always will. In the second place, the Morning Star will never pay for entertaining chorus girls. Now, you haven't heard the last of this. Oh, yes, I have. There's the door. Thanks. <laughs> I'm delivering the afternoon mail. Don't bother me, Sammy. How come you never get no mail? I use carrier pigeon. Hey, how does it feel to be out with a pigeon like the one you had last night? How did you know? I saw her pictures in her write-up. When did you read my copy? When I was carrying it to the basement to get burned. Oh, so she's not going to run it after all. That was some beef you had with Miss Armstrong. You know everything, don't you, Sammy? Oh, well... You know I'm going to slap you silly if you don't get out of here by the time I count three? Yes, sir, I know it now. <laughs> Afternoon mail, Miss Armstrong. Thank you, Sammy. That Harvey guy didn't get none at all. Hmm? Oh, I dare say. Maybe that's why he wanted to slap me around. He what? He said he was going to slap me silly. Look that big bully picking on a little fellow like you. Remember this, Sammy. You don't have to take a thing from Mr. Harvey. Not a thing. You mean I got the green light to get him told? You certainly have. Why, that man's losing all sense of proportion. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> now, let's see about the mail. What? What's this? 
We are considering George Harvey for an assignment in our New York office. We would appreciate any confidential information that you, as his present employer, might forward us concerning him. Harold Bell, editor, Acme News Service. Well, of all things. Well. Hello. Uh, This is Ned, Susan. Oh, yes, Ned. You can stop worrying about any tax boost on your home. I just came from the assessor's office. As your attorney, I convinced him that any raise at the present time would be completely unjust. All right, all right. Thanks, Ned. What's the matter? You you don't sound happy. Ned, I want you to draw up a contract for me. Sure. What kind? I want a contract covering one of my reporters whereby he cannot leave my employ for a period of one year. Don't leave him any possible out. Do you understand? Okay. You're the boss. What is his name? George Harvey. Oh. No, it's not what you're thinking. I wasn't even thinking. Well, then start thinking. I want this contract first thing in the morning. Morning mail, Miss Susan. Thank you, Sammy. Want to see something funny? Something funny? It's a dopey cartoon I got the artist to whip up about that Harvey guy. <laughs> oh, get a load of him with that silly look on his stupid face. And kisser. just what do you intend doing with this? I'm going to go right in and slap it on his desk. You do no such thing. Hey, hey, the cartoon. This is a newspaper office, Sammy, and the sooner you learn that, the better. But yesterday you gave me the green light. Never mind about yesterday. You said I could get him told. From now on, you will give Mr. Harvey nothing but the greatest respect. Huh? You will be courteous and complimentary. You will do his bidding at all times. In short, you will go out of your way to be nice to him. Now, is that clear? It ain't clear, but if you say so, I'll do it. Good. Now, go and tell Mr. Harvey I want to see him in my office. Morning, Mr. Harvey. Huh? Oh, it's you. How did you sleep last night, Mr. Harvey? What? Why? I just wanted to knock you out a good rest, that's all. Are you all right, Sammy? I'm kind of mixed up, but outside of that, I'm all right. What's your bidding? How's that again? I'm ready to do your bidding. Oh. Well, no bidding at the moment, Sammy. Especially since this comes as such a surprise. Yeah, you and me both. Well, I guess that cleans up a neat bit of repartee. Oh, I almost forgot. The big wheel wants to see you in her office. Oh, she does, huh? Well, if you think you heard a big beef yesterday, don't miss this second act. Mr. Harvey, can you go? Yeah, I think so, Sammy. Why? When you come out of her office, it might be a good thing to know. Now, let's get one thing straight, Susan. I don't intend to stand Here's your check, George. Huh? Your check? check. Your check for $25. Oh. The one we were so silly over yesterday. Well, this is more like it. Thanks a lot. Oh, it's nothing, really. Well, to you, maybe, but to me, 25 bucks is a real tidy sum. It's silly how we quarrel over petty things, isn't it, George? Well, it certainly is, especially when I was right all the time. Of course you were right. That's what I mean. I... Well, uh... I guess that about covers it. I must say this was real big of you. Oh, it wasn't at all. It was only just. It's what you can always expect here at the Morning Star. Susan, I I can't let you take all the blame. I I did a foolish thing to begin with. nonsense. No, 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 I mean it. It was all my fault. I I rushed into something I shouldn't have. Well, now, let's not say any more about it, shall we? From now on, this is the way it will always be. Susan, I like you like this. Well, maybe you should see more of me like this. Yes. Yes, maybe I should. Uh, how about tonight? Huh? A dinner at my house. Spaghetti. Spaghetti, huh? Uh-huh. Shall we say 7.30? Yes, let's say it. 7.30. 7.30. The grated cheese for the spaghetti... It's there. The soy sauce for the rice patients. That, too. And the ice cream for the cake a la mode. Yes, yes. Oh, and did you put the chestnuts in the turkey stuffing? Check. The mayonnaise for the salad. Oh, yes. Well, I guess that's about everything. It certainly is. Figure he'll go for the bait tonight? Just what do you mean by that? Pop 
the question. Ain't that what you're after? Certainly not. You think every time I have a small dinner party, I expect to be proposed to? Well, do you? Can't take your money for those easy questions. Shoot me a hard one. Patience. As I told you tonight, something extra special. I suspected that. So would it be too much trouble to go out of your way a little and be sweet to Mr. Harvey? Just how sweet? Well, you know what I mean, like telling him nice things about himself. Never was good at making things up. You better coach me. Well, he does have his nice points, you know. I'm listening. There he is. Patience. Sometimes those chimes play the most beautiful music in the world. Uh Uh-huh. But right now, they're playing stormy weather. (laughs) You know, Susan, maybe I should pinch myself. Why? No, just to be sure I'm not dreaming. A dinner that was out of this world, your piano music, the two of us. And no arguments. Heaven couldn't have anything on this. Heaven is sometimes nearer than we think, George. Everybody's been so wonderful. Down at the paper, here. You know, maybe I'm just beginning to get what I deserve. Well, of course you are, George. And I've got something else here that you deserve. No kidding. What is it? Well, never mind what it is. Just sign on the dotted line. Yeah. Well, as I saw the party, the first part, and the party, the second part, and the next one. Hey, this is a contract. Well, of course. Well, but it's for one whole year. Yes, and a raise in salary. You noticed that. Well, I certainly did, but but why? Little reporters like me don't rate these things. But from now on, you're a big reporter. Oh. There are big things ahead for the Morning Star, and, and you should be a part of those things. Big things? Huh? Well, yes, indeed. So, so just sign it, George. Well, well, maybe we should add one clause before I sign. What clause? Well, just an expense account for me in pursuit of my duties. Well, of course, sure. You know, just write it in. Yes, sir. Ah. Now my signature. There you are. Thank you, George, so much. Well, thank you. And now that I've signed, it's only fair to tell you that you went to a lot of trouble for nothing. I had no intention of leaving, ever. Oh, well, you can never tell about those things, and and now this makes it official. And now, Susan, how about that game of the canasta? Canasta? Hmm. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, George, but I do have a headache. Perhaps I'd better rest and, and, and some other night, huh? Oh, but you look all right. Yes, I know. I always do. It's embarrassing. You don't, you don't seem to be suffering any. Oh, but I, I am, really. Susan, did I do something wrong? Well, of course not. Now, you just run along like a good boy. Uh-huh. Okay, if that's the way you want it. Well, now, what in the world is that for? Well, Sammy told me this might come in handy, and brother, he was right. <laughs> Now back to our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, and the second act of our story. A day has passed, as days are wont to do even in Hillsdale. And Susan Armstrong, who is really Irene Dunn, looks up from her desk at the Morning Star as George Harvey, who is really Fred McMurray, storms into her office and rains all over the place. Of all the low-down, sneaking, conniving, underhanded, miserable, contemptible tricks... Everything I did was perfectly legal. Then you know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, no, I have no idea what you're talking about, and I thank you to watch your tone. I'm talking about this letter I got this morning from the Acme News Service offering me a job in New York. Uh, Well? They said they wrote to you asking for information about me. That's true. What did you tell them? Nothing. I'm not obligated to do their bidding. Maybe you're not, but you wrote me in with that phony contract the other night when you knew they wanted me. Susan... Susan, how could you do such a thing to me? You might take a little personal gratification from the fact that the paper needed you enough to offer you a contract. The Morning Star needed me. Why, a moron could write for this sheet. Perhaps you're right. I'd suggest that the moron retire to his office and start writing. Susan, I'm warning you. You can't get away with this. Ha! I'll break this contract if it's the last thing I ever do. I'm busy, Mr. Harvey. You sure are. Busy like the little bee in the fable. Well, we'll see who gets stung in the end. Please remember, you're speaking to a lady. Now, you want to bet? Here's your copy proof. Oh, thanks, Emmy. 
It might interest you to know that I slept quite well last night. Who cares, bird brain? The honeymoon's over. Well, I'll be... I called you in here, Mr. Harvey, to give you a little bit of news. Well, I was interested in a bit of news. What's up? Yesterday, we had a fire in Hillsdale that destroyed three buildings and endangered four more. Yeah, I know. I was there. Oh, were you really? Well, one would scarcely think so from the paragraph and a half you turned in. Well, what did you expect? The great American novel? I covered the bank robbery and wrote it up to the hilt. Two paragraphs. And that was padding it. The first bank robbery in Hillsdale in 45 years. Probably took the bank that long to get five grand together. You don't like this town, do you? Oh, frankly, no. Well, that's too bad. You'll be stuck in Hillsdale for another year, and I'd hate to see you unhappy so long. So long, Susan. I didn't dismiss you. Well, that's all right. I'm a self-starter. So long. Morning Star, Harvey speaking. Uh, is this George? Yeah, yeah. This is Celeste. Who? Celeste. Celeste Kaczynski. Oh, Kaczynski. I mean, who? Well, don't you remember me, George? In Miss America. Oh, oh, Celeste. Well, that's what I've been saying. Well, where are you? In Hollywood? I'm in Hillsdale, George. Hillsdale? But I, I thought that you were in out... In the bus station, George, and I'm frightened. The bus station? Well, what are you frightened of? Those buses won't hurt you, Celeste. Well, you're the only one in town that I know. Won't you come and get me? Well, you... yeah, sure. Uh, how long will it take? Well, not long. I'll be right down. Now, don't go away. Oh, I won't, George. There's no place for me to go. That's all right, Celeste. Go right ahead. Eat all you want. Oh, I'm almost ashamed of myself, but I couldn't eat on the bus all the way from California. Is that so? If I got out with the crowd to get something to eat, I was afraid I'd lose my seat. Oh, but uh, why did you come back on the bus? Silly. The planes don't stop in Hillsdale, only when they're forced down. Like the uh, other time when we met. Remember that, George? Oh, yes. But why did you come back here at all? I thought you'd be a Hollywood star by this time. So did I, George. But what about your screen test? Well, they met me at the plane, and I had a big automobile ride, and they were real nice at the studio. The screen test? I had lunch at the most famous restaurant in Hollywood, and everybody was wondering who I was. Yeah, and that figures. That night, they took me to the most wonderful nightclub, and they had the swellest floor show. I laughed and laughed, but I watched my manners because I wanted to make a good impression. Uh -huh. But the uh, screen test... Well, uh, it didn't take long. I'll tell you that. What didn't? The screen test. Oh, then you had it. Oh, sure. Then they gave me plane fare back to New York and said I'd hear from them in time. Uh, and you didn't take the plane because... It uh, doesn't stop in Hillsdale. No, no, I know. Well, maybe you could help me get a job here in Hillsdale. After all, with the write-up you gave me in your paper, that shouldn't be hard. Yeah, well, uh, you see... Uh, uh, well, is something the matter, George? No, 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 no. Everything's great. It's just that, well, I'm wondering about tonight. Have you... Uh, Made any plans? Oh, of course not, silly. I've kept tonight open just for you. Oh. I had a rush back to the plane the last time, but tonight we can pick up the sidewalks and throw them at the city hall. <laughs> That's right, we can. I I've got an expense account. We'll not only pick up the sidewalks, but we'll roll up the streets, too. <laughs> Good afternoon. Did you wish to see me? That's the last thing I'd wish. You know, care to look around my office? So you did it again. Well, I do quite a few things. To what specifically do you refer? This nightclub bill for $55.35. Oh, that. <laughs> Had a grand time, grand. Celeste is back, you know. Miss America. Uh, remember? Remember what I told you before? Remember the contract? Expense account and everything? It's all legal. And this three-column spread? What exactly is the meaning of this? Oh, that. The greatest human interest story that she'd ever ran. Beautiful girl spurned by Hollywood. Flies across country for a screen test. Great test, but no contract. So, she flopped out in Hollywood. Well, I wouldn't say that. She didn't have a chance, really. And now she's come back to her prize soccer. Meaning? I suppose you'll get married and become Mr. America. Well, we hadn't planned that far ahead, but uh, it's an idea. I'm not bad in trunks, you know. Well, speaking of trunks, you can pack yours right now. Oh, sounds like a distant assignment. India? See this contract? Ours? Watch closely. And that means... You're fired. Through. Washed up. Now get out and go to your Miss America. 
Go to New York. Go anywhere. But get out of here and don't you dare come back. You know something? That's the best advice you ever gave me. As a matter of fact, I planned the afternoon and evening with Celeste. Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, no, 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 no. You go first. I'm not taking any chances. Ha! Huh. Get me Harold... No, I mean, uh, get me Harold Bell, please. Acme News Service, New York. Now, that's right. Yeah, I'll hang on. Hello? Oh, Mr. Bell? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is George Harvey of the Hillsdale Morning Star. Who? George Harvey. You wrote me a couple of days ago about a job in your staff. Well, I'm ready to leave now. Sorry, that was a rush assignment. You didn't answer. The job's filled. Oh, but uh, Mr. Bell... Uh, yeah? Well, uh, nothing. Nothing. Thanks very much. Yes? Is this the editor? Yes. A woman? Well, as far as I know, is that so strange? Well. Who is this? Celeste Kaczynski. Oh. Uh, uh, what did you want? Well, I've been trying to get in touch with George Harvey. Yes? I had a date with him three hours ago, and he hasn't showed up. Do you know where he is? Well, no, I don't. Was this a business appointment? Strictly business. He was going to give me a big spread in your paper, and I was going to take that back to New York for publicity. And he didn't show up. I'm sick and tired of waiting. There's a bus to New York in 20 minutes, and you can tell him from me that if he isn't here by then, I'm going to be on it. Well, if I see him, I'll tell him. Well, thanks. Have a pleasant trip, Celeste. Well, thanks. Yes, Miss Armstrong? Is Mr. Harvey in his office? No, Miss Armstrong. He left the building some time ago. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Armstrong. Oh, bag of peanuts again. Hello, Squirrel. Have a peanut? Oh, go ahead. I got a whole bag full. Shake hands with a real squirrel, buddy. You eat nuts. I am nuts. Had a swell job with a grand girl. What do I do? Louse it up, but good. Now I've got nothing. Oh, sure, sure, you're smart. You store away food for the winter. But what did I store away? Nuts. I can't go back and ask for my job. And I, I can't go to New York. I can't go any place. Say, uh, how big is this hole you live in? Uh, well, uh, maybe we could work out a deal, huh? I could cook and keep the nest clean, and you could go out and bring in the food. We could at least try it for a while, and if it didn't work, why... Hello, George. Oh. Susan. <laughs> Someone I know? Oh, a third cousin of mine, once removed. Sit down, won't you? Thanks. I thought you might be here. Oh, I came early to get a lease on this bench for the winter. Well, there goes the bus to New York. Yeah. yeah. Funny, but I thought I saw someone waving from the bus. Oh, well, people always wave from buses. Know anybody going to New York? Oh. Huh. There was a time when you were thinking about New York. Oh, who cares about New York? Ever think of working for the Morning Star? Yeah, yeah. It's a great little paper. Ever try? No soap. Tough editor. No, oh, she's not so tough. Oh, huh? you know her? I do now. Well, uh, maybe you could put in a good word, huh? Maybe I did. What did the editor say? Tell him to report tomorrow. <laughs> Susan. Yes, George. <laughs> Oh, uh, you. Uh, ne never mind about the deal we had. You, you, you can come and bunk with me at the Morning Star. You mean a squirrel on the paper? Oh, you'll get used to it. You always have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Our 
Our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back in just a moment. Yes, George? Uh, Just a little matter, Susan, that concerns us both. Yes? I have a contract here that I drew up myself, the terms of which bind us together for 99 years. Well, is that legal? Sure, it's legal. It's just like a lease. I I don't want to make the same mistake again. I'm here and I want to stay. Oh, but I want you to stay. Okay, sign right here. <laughs> Look, your squirrel on the windowsill. <laughs> How do you like that? He's ready to move in. I wonder why. I'll tell you why. He thinks we're both nuts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Harry Von Zell inviting you to join us then. <laughs>